Hi guys. Um, I was I was watching a preacher today, and oh my gosh, um, I was so blessed because um, it was like God was speaking right to me. Like God had um, God had peeled back my secret uh, been in my bedroom. It was almost like this person had been in my bedroom this week because it's what I've been praying about. It's the secret things you don't you don't tell anybody because um, you're afraid that either people will be uh, super Christian uh, and try to God's word you to death and or you're afraid that um, uh, people will think less of God if they if they know your vulnerability. But as I sat there and I, this person began to talk and uh, strip off uh, his mask and and really say uh, what pa what many pastors go through and what, and what many preachers go through. And what me, myself, I've been battling as as a person, as a preacher, as a whatever. I just felt how freeing it was um, to just hear that as, as, as um, great as the outside looks. It's still the same stuff as we all go through. And it was just such an encouragement to me that he could be so honest. Um, and I began, and this, uh, today's sermon that I was watching, uh, just, it was like God had... God had ripped all my band-aid off and said, um, okay, so now what's your excuse? <laughs> I'm like, I have, I have none, because if he can feel, if this person can feel that way where he is, and then I can feel that way where I am, I guess I can preach your word. Because quite often with, be, before today, I used to feel, well, I can't preach because I deal with this, or at times I feel like I'm such, um, not the kind of person that people would want to listen to, or if they really knew me, they wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't listen to me because I would feel like a fraud, but Today, it just was like so freeing to know that my favorite preacher in the world <laughs> goes through the same things. Quite often when I'm done, done here, um, when I'm done speaking to all of you, when I'm done preaching in front of all of you, and I see all your likes and all your comments, um, when I turn the camera off, the devil likes to whisper to me, uh, they're only listening to you because they don't know you. And today, with that, having that preacher say all that stuff about his life, um, the Lord uh, showed me the lies that I was helping the devil tell. And and I was just so free today watching that sermon. And it was not even the crux of his sermon that, uh, that freed me. It was the fact that he was able to be so vulnerable and to know that I'm not the only person going through this. And, um, and I just wanted to tell you today that um, that wherever you are, 
there is someone going through what you're going through the same challenges you're going through the same you know there is someone and there is power in being vulnerable now you may not want to do it on in internet land but find someone to be vulnerable with because your vulnerability can free someone to walk in their purpose because quite often we're not vulnerable because we think we're the only ones and us knowing that yes other people are going through through it too and they can walk in their and they're walking in their purpose just fine with their brokenness it frees us to know that we can do the same thing as well and it totally freed me watching this today like it just totally dispelled like you know what his bone really did for me today it totally dispelled all the lies of the devil um of the devil that the devil tried to tell me oh um um you'll you'll never be you know whatever junk the devil tries to tell me it dispelled the whole the whole thing that I was the only one going through this and other people they're strong and other people they have their whatever and I'm and the only one going through this so it dispelled all that all those myths and now I'm going to walk in purpose more than ever and you know you know sometimes when people don't know what to do um, when well-meaning people don't know what to do and when people are vulnerable they try especially Christians I think they try and uh, scripture it over like they try and give you encouraging scriptures and yeah this the Word of God is awesome and yes we should always put ourselves against the Word of God but sometimes people just need a chance to be vulnerable without getting um getting there is a time to speak the word over people's lives but there is a time to just listen to when people say um here's what i'm going through here here's what i'm dealing with sometimes they just need you to say hey i'm going through that too or or yeah i've been there or just to listen like sometimes people just need a listening ear they don't need a whole bunch of scriptures because let me tell you something people that have been in the body of christ for a long time they know all the scriptures they know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world they know they know all the scriptures they know i'm the righteousness of god they know all that but putting that into practice is sometimes hard and sometimes we don't let people say i'm not there yet i know it i know it but i i haven't gotten down to it down to the middle of my, my wounds yet so you have um, we we have to be better at letting people just be who they are and come as they are not only with dress but with their emotions with their feelings we need to give people permission to be human and when you give people permission to be human it will free them to to really go into their destiny it will free God to heal all all of their wounds because for too long 
in the church and out of the church. We have covered up our wounds. We have covered up our scars. We've cried in private. We've 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 hidden behind uh, these masks that God is saying, I need you to remove the mask. Because by removing the mask, you can, you can um, free other people. So, and there is always somebody going through what you've going, been going through. Like, there's always somebody, like with me, there's always somebody single thinking that they're not pretty enough that no man will love them or whatever lies of the devil. There's always somebody, there's always somebody, there's always somebody going through what you're going through. There's always somebody saying that there's always somebody there's always always somebody going through what you're going through um, and by you being uh, vulnerable and human it gives them permission to be vulnerable and human gone are the days where where we have to pretend where we have to go into church and, and, and put on this facade and shake up off what is wrong. I often say, come into what is wrong. Don't shake it off because you have to pretend to worship God. Bring him your brokenness. Say, say Lord, I'm broken, but I'm here. I'm broken, but I'm available. And we're not celebrating brokenness. We're in acknowledging brokenness on the first step to healing. We've been running from brokenness for too long. We've been, we've been, um, we've been running from our pain and our sadness for, for too long. And it's time that we come out of the darkness and say, you know what, I'm screwed up. <laughs> And when you admit, admit that you're screwed up, that's when he can fix you. But if you don't admit it to, to first God and then others around you, he can't heal it. Kirk Franklin said something awesome. He said, God will only heal what you reveal. And if you don't reveal it, he can't heal it. Beloved, he doesn't want you to walk around in fakeness and phoniness. He wants you to walk around in true freedom. He said, I am come that you will have life and have it more abundantly. And that freedom starts with vulnerability. And, you know, light will cancel out the devil's devices. The moment you shine light on your issues, whether it be um, not feeling good enough, whether it be uh, being single, whether, whether it be uh, not feeling sexy, whether it be with your job, whether it be with, with not being married or being married or or dealing with a bad marriage, or dealing with financial issues, or dealing with, you know, whatever it is. Unless you reveal it, he can't heal it. And when you reveal it, he will not only heal you, but he'll heal several other people by your story. So, beloved, it's time to tell the truth. He doesn't want you to to just be by yourself in your mess, in your mis misery. He wants you to come to the light and live his real freedom. He doesn't want you to live that fake freedom. Oh, I'm fine when you're not. When you're dying, when you're fighting with your husband day in and day out. 
how are you? Oh, blessed, highly favored. No, you're not. You guys are broken. And you haven't spent time together in weeks. But you're not telling anyone. And what you do go, if you do have a marriage counselor, you're lying to the marriage counselor because you're afraid to look, to look like an idiot. Listen, we're all idiots at some point, and sometimes looking like a, like a super Christian will make people think you're holy, but, but you will still stay in your brokenness. The Lord really wants you to come out of your brokenness and understand that he's got enough to deal with all your issues. He's got enough to deal with that molestation. He's got enough to deal with your insecurities. He's got enough to deal with you're not thinking you're good enough. He's got enough to deal with all of that. All you need to do is, is start telling the truth. First, you need to get honest with God about where you are. It doesn't matter about where you think you should be, what you think you should be doing. Get honest about where you are. Find someone, first of all, before you find someone to get honest with, get honest with God. Start telling him what's really down down there. He knows anyway. He's got enough to handle your stress. He's got enough to handle everything in your life. You don't need to hide. You don't need to hide. He's there with you anyway. And he, like a good father, he won't, he won't, uh, uh, pry out of you. He wants you to come and tell him, although he knows what you're going through and what you're really facing. He wants you to be bone honest and you don't have to use uh, special words. Just be honest. Just say, God, I know I should, I know the word says this, but I feel this. Help me get there. And when you say help me get there, he will help you get there. But all this fake hiding and all the, this, it, like I call it the Instagram uh, syndrome where we can put up pictures and snapshots and comments and make our lives look so great when it's really a mess. He wants you to come out of that. He wants you to really live your Instagram. He doesn't want it to just be pictures. He wants you to really have that happy family. He wants you to really have that happy life. He wants you to really have that contentment. He wants it to be real and it is for you. It's not just for everyone else. It is for you. He died for you. He didn't just die for the whole world and that's it. He died for you. He died for Rachel as Elizabeth Esdale. He died for me. And he just wants you to get that you're important to him and your issues are important to him. And he wants to heal you. Stop running. You have to face yourself, beloved, because when's the last time you really spent time with yourself and really faced up to what is going on with you? You know, what quarantine has done is really slowed us down and really caused us to face what's going on with us. And a lot of relationships are suffering a lot of people are suffering with depression um, because one reason I believe is that busyness creates a false sense of reality that we, if we can keep going, we don't have to stop 
and work on ourselves. But when there's nowhere to go, we have to stop and work on ourselves. And that's what he wants. Beloved, he's, God wants real freedom for you today. But for that real freedom, you, you've got to take him to the scary place. Take him to that place in your childhood. Take him right there. Right where it hurts. Take him to your out of control sex drive that you try and cover up with romance novels. Take him to to your take him to everywhere that hurts. Take him to that molestation place. Take him there. Take him right there. Take him to that um lying spirit that 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 you just deal with. And a lot of people think that that you're a liar, but no, you're not a liar. You're you're just hurting. There's been years of hurt and nobody believed you when you told the truth. So you started making up stories when you were a kid. And people say you're a liar, they can't trust you. But what they don't understand is that you know that you want to be free but you you think that if you tell the truth people won't like you anymore but take him to that place take him to every disgusting low down dirty place that you think that people will not like because when you do freedom is lying there Freedom lies in your vulnerability. Real freedom lies in your vulnerability. And the Lord wants you to be free today. The Lord says who the sun sets free is free indeed. See what happens oftentimes is the sun is the sun Jesus set you free, but you don't receive or walk in that freedom because you're afraid to be vulnerable. You just run here and run there and be on the deacon board and be on this board and be on that board. You can't, you can't run forever, beloved. You need to face yourself. You need to face that you're not good with money. You need to face that you drink too much. You need to face that you gossip because you think that you're not good enough, that the real essence of you is not good enough. So you have to put down other people because you have really low self-esteem. You need to face that about yourself. You need to face the dirtiness. You need to face the ugliness because on the other side of that is real freedom. And that's the only way that God's glory will permeate your life if you're honest and vulnerable. The Lord wants you to experience a life more abundantly than, than you can ever imagine. But for that to happen, you have to be willing to be scared and be willing to be vulnerable and be willing to be laughed at, be willing to be judged. Because if you are that, he can take you the rest of the way. He'll be with you. He'll put people around you that can help you to whatever journey. He'll put counselors around you. He'll put therapists around you. He'll put pastors around you. He'll send help. But you have to... Be willing to say, God, here I here I am. Here's the screwed up garbage that I've done. Here's here's what I'm dealing with. You need to be vulnerable. You need to be vulnerable in in order to be free. You need to take off all all the, take off the masks that you've been wearing for years and be be man enough, be woman enough to walk in freedom, not fear. The Lord's not calling for fear. Fear is of the devil. 
freedom is of God. The Lord's calling for freedom today. He wants you to get to know the authentic self that you've been hiding from. You see, the, the thing about hiding from yourself is you hide the bad stuff about yourself, but you also hide the good stuff about yourself. There, there is untapped potential in you, beloved, that in running from yourself, in hiding from yourself, in not being vulnerable, you're missing out on that part of yourself. You're not only hiding the bad stuff, you're hiding the good stuff. Some of you have been hiding for so long that you don't even know who the real you is. One year you're Christian, one year you're Muslim, one year you're an atheist. Get to know who you are. Get to know who you are. And the way to do that is to get to know who created you. Once you get to know who created you, a whole world of freedom will open up. A whole life that you would never have imagined is waiting for you on the other side of vulnerable. I just want you, beloved, today to walk in freedom, walk in joy, walk in love. And and walk in it for real. Don't just say, I'm walking in joy, I'm walking in love, I'm walking in prosperity. Don't just do the Christianese thing. Walk in it for real. And the Lord is saying, Beloved, I want you to walk in it for, for real. I want you to walk in love for real. I... I don't want you to just say you love me. I want you to walk in it for real. And he's like, I need you to to walk in it for real. I need you to expose the ugly so we can deal with it together. Whether, whether that means going to therapy, which I'm a proponent of, by the way. I've done myself. Whether that means talking to a friend talking to a pastor, talking to whoever. He wants you to be free. He wants you to walk in real freedom. He wants those Instagram pictures not to be lies. The thing with the society is it functions on lies. It functions on who you are, on the outside while ignoring the real person on the inside. All com all of those commercials are like, drive this car, look this way, and you'll feel better. But usually, all, all that gives you is you spend a lot of money and you feel the same way. The Lord wants to, the Lord so wants to fix all the broken pieces inside you and you have to understand that you are worthy of his love. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy of his love. You are worthy of his love. You are worthy of his love. You are worthy of a life partner, a man or woman who will love you just the way you are. You are worthy of friends who will not judge you, who will celebrate with you, who will pray for you, who you can be the, the genuineness of who you are, who you don't have to pretend to be super Christian with, who you can just pretend, who you can just be yourself with at all times. Quit running from yourself and deal with yourself. Because on the other side of dealing with yourself and dealing with that vulnerable, vulnerable part of you is freedom that you could never ima ever imagine. He wants to make your quote-unquote Instagram feed your real life. 
He wants to make those smiles real. He wants to make that marriage a happy one. He wants to make that business an overflowing one. He wants to make your financial future a bright one. He wants to make your kids he wants to make your kids just overflow with love for you but in order to do that you need to start telling the truth about where you are and how you got there if you need help doing that you need to find a counselor there are quite a few free counseling services online that are really good and um and they just can help you walk through. But before you go to counseling, you need to come clean with God and yourself about who you are and where you are in your life. Because I've been through this too, where you go to a counselor's office and you, and you even know how to play the counseling game, game so it doesn't really help you at all because you know what to say but it's not until you get clear about what you need help with that they can help you thank you guys today for listening to me i hope this helped thanks I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is rested, it's such a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free. I'm free, praise the Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul was rested, it's such a blessing, praise God, hallelujah, I'm free, I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No more bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is rested. It's such a blessing. Praise God, hallelujah, I'm free. Freedom's available to you today. Reach up and grab it. Reach up and grab it. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye, guys. My prayer today is that you walk in the freedom. Be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. Quit running. Because running doesn't make you anything but tired. He wants you to walk in freedom, like I've said numerous times in the video. He died so you can get rid of that addiction. He died so you can get rid of that that need to gossip. 
he died so you could get rid of that need to lie, cheat, and steal. He died so you can discover the wonderful person that he's put inside of you. Get rid of those old tapes in your head and understand that those tapes, that those things that you've been listening to, they're lies of the enemy. Don't let the lies of the enemy cover up God's truth. Walk in the freedom of life today. Walk in the new life that he's given you. And here new life doesn't mean salvation. New life means, means the wonderful life he died to give you when you're saved. He died to give you a wonderful life. He died to give Rachel Esdale a wonderful life. He died to give whatever your name is a wonderful life. And he knew what you would struggle with before you started struggling with it. So that is not a hindrance to your purpose. That is actually going to be the catalyst to your purpose. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've said to us today. We love you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for real freedom. Thank you, Lord, for vulnerability. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're putting people around us for us to be vulnerable with, that you're putting counselors in our lives for us to be vulnerable with, that you're putting therapists for us in our lives that we can be vulnerable with. Teach us, God. We're so broken that we need to be taught. We need to play new tapes in our heads, oh God. Tapes that you put there, not tapes that our father put there, not tapes that our cousin put there, not tapes that our mother put there, but tapes that you put there that we can receive who we really are. Make the word real to us today, Lord God. Make the word, all the words that we read and know, God, make them real to us that we can really take them on, not just as good words for a scripture for, to preach, but, but words that we can live by and really absorb, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So guys, I will see you next time. Thank you for hanging with me and letting me be vulnerable. Thanks. Bye. Freedom is just a vulnerability away. The Lord said today, freedom is just a vulnerability away. Bye, guys. Take care. See you next week. Or maybe this week. I don't know, but this was burning inside me. I had to tell you. See you later. Bye.